All right, peace be upon you, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Now, in today's video, I just want to speak a little bit on polygyny, my thoughts on polygyny in the Quran, because I kind of see two sides concerning the polygyny issue. One camp, usually women or more liberal leaning so called Quran aloners. They'll say that it's completely forbidden, it's not allowed. Then you get the other camp, this Mahdi Tijiani types who just promote it as the greatest thing in the world. And I kind of want to do my best to bring in a reasoned, reasonable perspective to this controversial issue of polygyny. So, from to kind of summarize, what, what I see in the Quran is... God does allow for polygyny, I do see that, but at the same time it is discouraged. Now, obviously when it's discouraged, it's not discouraged on the grounds that it's sinful. It's not sinful to be polygynous, obviously. God, why would God allow us to do anything that's sinful? That doesn't make any sense. But rather, it's discouraged on the grounds that it's impractical and usually not the best way to operate your marriage with few exceptions, okay? So, we have verses in the Quran where it talks about the wives of the Prophet, the wives, you know, you know, it's not allowed for anybody to marry the wives of the Prophet after he dies. You have as well uh, Muhammad marrying the ex-wife of his adopted son, Zayd. You have things like that, which are, it, it's, God even says, marry two, three, and four, but if you cannot do justice, stick to one. So you have those which are, I shouldn't say promoting, but they allow for the concept of polygyny within a righteous marriage. And then you have other parts in the Quran which tend to discourage it. So you have in the Quran where God says that uh, marry two, three, or four, the one that I just quoted you, marry two, three, or four, but if you can't do justice, then marry one. God also says in the Quran, um, if you can't do justice between them, and you will not be able to do justice, so that seems like a slight discouraging of polygyny. You also have a verse in the Quran where God says that he created everything in pairs. Pairs are duos, duos, one and two, right? So how, how do we kind of meld these two concepts together? allowing for polygyny but a general discouragement and not dive into the far extremes of either the liberal left-wing so-called Quran aloners who just want to make the Quran completely in line with everything the modern world teaches and at the same time these insecure broken failed divorced single red pill guys who just want to go way too far and say women are only there to please men and there's no other purpose for them how do we find a reasoned perspective in the Quran? So, my thoughts on polygyny are, does God allow it? Yes. But, he does discourage it because, okay, here's the thing. What most people who, prom uh, most of the people who I see promoting polygyny, who are gung-ho about polygyny, they're usually, I, I, I say polygyny is allowed, but I'm not gung-ho about polygyny. I don't want polygyny. I'm in a monogamous marriage. I want to stick to monogamy, stick to just me and my wife. That's how I am. Because it's a hard balancing act to have multiple women in your life and treat them completely equally. And it's a lot of emotions you have to deal with. And it, it can be a juggle it can be an emotional juggle and personally I don't want to go through that I like sticking to one wife being with one woman I think that is more natural per se because the Quran also says that God created everything in pairs and I believe my wife is my pair she's my mate my match that's how I see it but you, let's say you were in a situation of I don't know let's say I'm I have a man here, Jack, and he's married to a woman named Natalie. Jack and Natalie are married to each other, and let's say Natalie's cousin is a believing woman, and Natalie's cousin, her cousin becomes a widow. Her cousin's husband dies, and now she's single, and she has nowhere to be, nowhere to go. She's in a tough situation. She needs someone to kind of take care of her and her kids. So Natalie then goes to her husband, Jack, and says, hey, this is my cousin. She's a good woman, a believing character. Why don't we bring her in into the marriage and take care of her and enfranchise her and raise her station in life? And Jack says, okay, yeah, no problem. In situations like that, it makes sense to be polygynous. You're, you're doing it for 
another person. You're not being selfish and self-centered. You're doing it kind of as an act of charity to take care of somebody who's disenfranchised. Another example, let's say Jack and Natalie are married and a huge war happens. Let's say a group of the disbelievers, they declare war on the believing society. And obviously this war results in a lot of casualties and a lot of believing women, a flood of believing women leaving the side of the kafirs and coming over to the believers seeking fealty. We have an example of this in the Quran. God says to test the women when they come to you. So now you have a surplus of women who don't have any enfranchisement in society. They're new to this civilization. They're leaving their evil doing previous civilization they lived in they heard the word of god and now they're trying to start a new life and then a guy sees one of those women jack who has natalie speaks with natalie lets her know hey i really want to bring her on take care of her make sure she's okay and kind of raise her station in life as an act of charity again that that's the right mentality to do polygyny i think god dis so god discourages it but i think as an act of charity and goodwill and good faith and maybe your wife bringing it to you or it coming along your way and you just like i said finding a way to do a good deed for another believer that's a context in which polygyny can be successful now the people who take these passages in the quran which do allow for polygyny and they go gung-ho about it like these mahdi tijiani guys they're so insecure that would be say he's just like uh why do you think a man would marry another woman when he's already married to a woman? For himself? For another person? To take care of her? Obviously it's for himself, for his own pleasure. What the falafel do you think it's for? That is the wrong mentality. And personally, I think men who have that kind of selfish thought process, they're not even ready for a single marriage, let alone polygyny. Polygyny is a delicate situation. It's a difficult balancing act. And if, unless you are the most masculine, selfless, kind, gentle, patient, stable man, you will not be able to handle such a situation, which again is a delicate balancing act. Guys who are selfish and foolish like that, they can never handle polygyny properly. And I guarantee you, people like Mahdi Tijiani, his home life is crap. People with that mentality, they, they never hand, handle their marriages properly. And I, I tend to see that people who are, again, the, the most enthusiastic about polygyny and polygyny for men is normal and their monogamy is terrible and men are supposed to be with multiple women, they go into it with the wrong mentality. They they go into polygyny because God does allow for it and with the thought of oh hey man I can be with a Chinese girl a Puerto Rican girl a African girl and a light-skinned girl at the same time yeah bro sign me up they're, they're thinking of themselves and the sexual benefit and the sexual pleasure instead of thinking of helping somebody and uplifting them that is the wrong mentality to go into polygyny with Almost every single person that I see who, again, promotes polygyny as the standard, the norm, when personally I think monogamy is a standard and the norm, but there are select few cases in which polygyny can work in an act of charity and elevating someone's situation. But those who promote, they're so big on polygyny. You'll see this with certain hadithans. You'll see this big, it's in the Hebrew Israelite crowd. Usually people like that are hypersexualized. They can't stop staring at women walking down the street. They see a new girl, they find her appealing at first glance and they stare at her. They wanna to talk to her, they wanna make her a wife. If you go in with that mentality, you are not ready for polygyny and you're not ready for any marriage at all. Uh, in my thought, my opinion, my experience, if you deal with your marriage in the right way, as I do with my wife, you a, a real selfless marriage where you are thinking of your woman first, not thinking of yourself and your member downstairs of, oh, hey man, this is going to feel good. I can be with a Chinese girl now on top of an Arab girl. And you know, even these guys, they think of having all the women share their beds. And I really don't want to use the word, but group sexual activities, it's just ridiculous. They don't even think of separating the bed. If you're coming in with that mentality of thinking downstairs as opposed to the way I see my marriage, which I view it in terms of selflessness. I'm here to take care of my woman, make sure she's okay. I'm here to put her needs and her wants above my own needs and above my own wants. Obviously, God first and then the woman. I need to check and make sure she's okay. When, when you invest that kind of love and dedication into a person, 
you usually as a man don't desire to take on another person. You just don't because it already takes so much out of you in a good way. It's not a complaint. It's a blessing and a wonderful thing, but it is such an investment of the heart and mind and soul, a real God-fearing, selfless marriage that you don't have the energy or the heart capacity or real estate usually to bring another person into that equation. You may only do so in an emergency circumstance to take care of somebody as an act of charity, but people who don't go into the marriage with that, their marriages with that mentality, they go in thinking of this, they go in thinking of the pleasure and the sexual aspect of it. They are just so appealed by the aspect or the thought of polygyny and having multiple women these people are not ready for it when i see what god has said in the quran there's two sides to the coin god allows for polygyny the prophet had multiple wives but at the same time he warns against this that that's generally how i view it i i think it's good i'm not saying you can only do it in a position of charity i'm, I'm not saying that god never says that in the quran i'm, I'm just putting out there that men who are ready for marriage in the first place and especially ready for taking care of multiple women which is far more difficult they're not going to desire to do that in the first place because they're already investing so much into the woman they're with already if you understand what I'm saying men who are childish and selfish and they just want to be with multiple women of multiple races and not even have them have separate beds these people are usually the ones who are the most enthusiastic hebrew israelites people like that for polygyny they'll say oh yeah man it's normal it's natural and they want an excuse for whenever they see a appealing woman walking down the street that they can go and talk to her chatter up whisper sweet nothings in her ear these men are it's if you're going and seeking out and wanting polygyny and doing it for yourself you're not ready for it. But if an opportunity by the Lord's leave comes your way and you step up and do th something to help another person, I think that's more of a natural way to go about it. So that's kind of my understanding of the Quranic concept of polygyny. Is it allowed? Yes. Is it for the pleasuring of the man and being with multiple women and just having these bragging rights these insecure guys talk about? No, not at all. Is it about elevating somebody's status in society looking at somebody who's poor and unfortunate and bringing them on and giving them love and companionship and a family environment and sisterhood through your other wife and just kids and all that kind of stuff that's really the purpose for it everything you do you should think of god first when i married my wife my first wife god willing my only wife that's all i desire when I married her, I didn't marry her thinking of downstairs. And obviously, that's a component of it. And this goes for any marriage, whether it's monogamous, whether it's polygynous. I wasn't thinking of downstairs primarily. Obviously, I'm attracted to her. I love her. I have no complaints about that. But I went into it with the thought of, I really want to marry this girl. Obviously, I love the way she looks. She's super attractive. But I want to marry her because I feel as though she brings me closer to God. Her presence in my life increases me spiritually increases me as a man i can see my presence in her life increases her spiritually makes her better as a woman that's why i want to bring her on i want to make her my wife to serve the lord because she allows me to be a better servant in the eyes of my lord that's how you go into anything even with your marriage so let's say you see a second woman and you're married to one already and you say i i really want to bring her on because she encourages me in the cause of God. She's a good sister to my wife as well. And I, I, I like when they're together and they're talking to each other and bouncing ideas back and forth and they give each other good company. She's really good with my kids as well. And I really love her as well. I know my leadership and companionship, it increases her in faith. You know what? I'm going to bring her on as a second wife. That's the right way. Doing everything, thinking of God first and will God be pleased with this? Not yourself, not, hey, I'm going to marry this woman because she's attractive and I... Dude, I just can't be single anymore. I really want to take this woman to bed. Or, hey, man, I'm going to take the second or third wife because she's so attractive, bro. I really just want to bring her into my bedroom. Wrong, 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 wrong. You have to, with everything, if you want to be successful and not watch a disaster unfold in your household life, which can very easily happen with polygyny, which is why God warns us about it. Although allowing it, he gives us warnings and 
precautions concerning it if you don't want to see that kind of a pandemonium disaster happen in your home with everything first marriage second marriage put the almighty first stop thinking with your flesh stop thinking with your carnal base crude and coarse desires and think of spiritual things think of heavenly things and allow heaven to guide you and lord willing you'll do everything properly if you go with that mentality but anyways ladies and gentlemen that's really all i gotta say on the matter i hope this talk was a blessing and yeah peace to you remember to see the bounds to keep your eyes wide open peace out